ASP is back again with more Marine Corps uniforms during World War II. Joe, take it away. What's this? All right, Chris. This is by far the rarest piece of my collection, and anyone who does have one will agree with me. This is the what the Paramarines were issued for combat, or the airborne unit of the Marine Corps. Okay. Primarily, it was really only one regiment of them, and um, we issued these just prior to the invasion of Bougainville on November 1st, 1943. And uh, they wanted all the jungle fighting. They wanted to do, try and do away with the utility, the green utility shirt, mm -hmm. and go to camouflage. And um, it was it was unofficially known as frog skin. That's sort of the, the camel pattern. You know nowadays we have woodland and digital and yeah. tiger stripe and everything. Always had its like unofficial camouflage name. Well, this is frog skin. And what the what the main purpose of them, when you can tell a, a paramarines camo jacket, is the angled pockets. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. It, it's fully internal, big internal pockets, which again, like we talked about before, they needed to get away from the open pockets from stuff falling out. Yeah. And this was a good way of doing it. And they felt the angle pockets made it easy to get into with their harnesses on and all, if they ever jumped. Now, they never, the, the interesting thing about the, the, the uh, United States Marine Corps parachute unit is they never made a combat jump, yet they're the very first airborne unit in the U.S. to see combat at Guadalcanal, Tulagi, Cavuto, right, right in August of 40, uh, 42. Okay. And we'll get into their specific gear later. But this is the jacket. It was a, it was still a herringbone twill. Uh, as you can see, it was frost and camouflage. It had the angle pockets. It had uh, steel button snaps on it. There were no brass USMC buttons. Why? I don't know. You don't know. Um, probably cost factor. Oh yeah, of course. A, the brass, and two, the st stamp, stamp it, yeah. U.S. Marine Corps on all the buttons. That's true. That's probably the main reason. The war was, effort, yeah. It was completely reversible oh, wow. to what we would consider jungle or sand. Uh, you can see there, excellent, view it out upside down. The gentleman's name is stenciled right in there. Oh, like wow. we said with the Marines, they stenciled everything. Your name went on everything. So What's the gentleman's name? name? Do you remember? Short. This is got a... H.R. Short. H.R. Short. Yep. Excellent. I love fine pieces with, the, with the, uh, the veterans' names in them. Now, when the Marines landed at Bougainville on November 1st, 43, uh, it is a large island in the northern Solomons. It is deep, dark jungle. Mm -hmm. So they weren't wearing the sand side out of this uniform. They were wearing the, the green jungle side. And uh, primarily, there was only one regiment of them. They fought on Bougainville. The jungles were terrible. So we have to think how many of these jackets actually have survived. Not a lot. Not a lot. And as a Marine Corps collector, it's only, oh. other than books, it's only the second one I know of. But yeah, they are, it is pretty cool. It's in great shape. Obviously, he had a ballpoint pen link in his pocket at uh. one point. You can see that. But other than that, it's great shape. Um, I do not own the pants. So the pants are also hard to find. Yes. With this. And you, it has the sa same pattern, camo, still reversible. Same steel snap buttons and angled pockets that led to a big ass pocket, so the pockets actually connected. Okay. Who would want to sit on your K rations? I don't know. You know? Yeah. But that's the way they were designed. And that's it. That's the parachute camouflage uh, utility jacket. And the hat is. Oh, uh, this is a U.S. Army. U.S. Uh, Army? Yes, I will describe that in a second. The P 41 utility cap. In Marine Corps lingo, a cover. Marines don't wear hats, they wear covers. Okay. I don't know why. Um, you can tell the difference. Again, any Marine who gets a hat, he's sticking his EGA on it. He needs to stand out, right? Yeah. That's a pride thing, as we all know. The weave in the herringbone twill. Uh, the, the camera's not going to pick it up, but in a Marine Corps weave, if you can see the stripes, you'll see it. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do okay. an in-depth look We'll do an in-depth look, in look yeah. into it. It looks like uh, like sergeant chevrons. Yeah. The way it's sewn up, down, up, down. On an army weave, it does not. It'll have one at a forty-five degree angle, and then like a squiggle across. Mm. Yeah. The marine corps one is a is a very clean looking. You know, uh, chevron sh angle weave. This does not have that. This has. So it goes like a squiggle to a slash, squiggle to a slash. Mm. So that's the army weave. And you can usually tell if one does not have one, 
But you can tell by the, if, you, if you found the contract tag still in the hat, which usually they're they're gone by then, you can tell that one too, of course. Okay. If it's Marine Corps contract or Army contract or Navy contracted. So wait, why does this have? Why is this Army but with a? Well, um, a lot of times the even the Marines, even though in World War II, still got supplied by the Army. Uh, okay. Their specific equipment wasn't always available, and is and they are. Uh, Good at acquiring what they need. Yeah. So whatever they need, <laughs> they, from, they, they acquire, have to acquire from an, another branch. Regardless of how they acquire it. Okay. Stick an EGA on it. It's his. It's a marine. Right. And again, this was the, and uh, again, we're Americans. We wear baseball hats. Yeah. That's a baseball hat, right? Short build one. There are some versions with slightly longer build. And that's it. Okay. All right. We're gonna take a quick in-depth look of both this uniform and the hat. All right, in-depth look. Frog skin. Buttons, they don't have USMC on it due to cost reasons, that's of course. Joe, come over here. So, slanted. Of course. Yeah, that's the key. When you're looking for a, marine, a paramarine jacket, that, that's the key that you look for. The slanted pockets. Mm -hmm. Alright. Look on the sleeve. Snap buttons as well. Alright, let's open her up. And this is reversible. It's completely reversible, absolutely. Well, ink stain. I mean, yeah. the Marine had a yeah. pen. He lost his pen in that pocket, that's for sure. There it is, Short HR, that's his name. I wonder if he's still alive. Okay. Can we reverse it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Reverse side of it. Of course, the, well, the buttons do work still. And that's it. Oh, the collar. All right. All right, the U.S. Army hat with an Eagle Globe and Anchor. Let's see if my camera can pick it up. There we go. And you know what? Slightly you could see it. It has the Caribbean islands on it. There you go. So this is an Alistair Man's uh, mm -hmm. hat. Or at least TGA was. What a little littering is over there. Well, the veteran I got this from has served through Korea and Vietnam. Oh, wow. During the World War II in Korea, sailors and Marines stenciled everything with their last name, middle initial, first initial. Mm -hmm. The Army does their last initial and the last four digits of their serial number. Later on, even the Marines and Navy also did that. So he would have done that much later with this hat. Okay. All right. Fantastic. All right, let's go on to the next uniform. Okay.